live streams, but I've never done my own, mostly because I've seen the pitfalls of what happens potentially right. with things, bad things that can happen when you're when you're doing a live stream. Like all Not of a sudden, some, someone will, on the other side will be like, oh, I'm going to share my screen and do blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, something bad happens. Uh, I guess. Uh, we, saying, we had yeah. a lot of people get hit with, <laughs> with stuff. Anyway, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm good. No worries. That's true. Okay, but now I, it seems like we're live. So, so now we're here with the Godfather of uh, Flat Earth. Uh, come on, Mark, you're the Godfather. Uh, Who is the Godfather? <laughs> if not you, I mean, Flat Earth Dave is, you know, mentioned in there. I, I, I guess. I don't think you should talk to me about the Godfather. <laughs> no, well, no, no. Why not? Why not? Why? <laughs> well, you know, you sounded like Trump just then. That was scary. Yeah, yeah but that, that I, I've, I've tried to sound like Trump. You know, Mark is a really great guy. He <laughs> went to flat Earth. I know it's a crazy thing. I don't believe that <laughs> Earth is flat. I think it's round. But uh, you know, I don't care. I love everybody. No, he doesn't say that's that. good. You know, for for someone that doesn't have a, a a straight up American accent, that's pretty good. Hey, listen, Mark, I've only spoken English for five years. Really? Yeah. I mean, and I'm, you, I'm, yeah. And you are currently in Sweden, but you're yeah. originally from? I'm from Iran originally. I came to Sweden in uh, when I was three years old in 1987. So I'm 39 now. I'm turning oh, okay. 40. Uh, it's not nice. But uh, yeah. yeah, so I came to Sweden in 1987. But yeah, of course, I knew about English. We, we learned that in school and I got some good grades in it. But actually speaking English, yeah, I only did that when I was, uh, you know, uh, traveling and shit gotcha. like that. Gotcha. But ever since I started to stream, then I started to speak English. And, you know, the thing is this. The more you do it, the better you get at it, you know. So yeah. that's just what it is. Yeah. So, yeah. So five years. That's it. And, and by the way, just so you know, I am I am not real. I mean, yes, I am. I'm an OG when it comes to Flat Earth. And by that, I mean old guy. Uh, I've, I've done, in fact, the flat earth clues are going to turn nine years old oof, in, uh, in two weeks, not nine even two years. weeks, but nine years on the 10th of February, they'll be nine years old. Uh, there were, were there guys doing it before me? Yes. Eric Dubé was, was releasing his oh, content yeah. in 2014. Matt Boylan, uh, one of the reasons I, I looked into it, uh, he was releasing his stuff before 2015 uh my first my first official video was on february 10th 2015 and yes i can i can take credit for a bunch of people getting into it uh yeah. you know the the late rob skiba jaron because he thought my video quality was crap uh you know all sorts of people you know the first conference and and a lot of people getting into it yes you you bet uh i am the first year so if you get into flat earth you, at least back in the day there was a high degree of possibility that you were going to run into my stuff first uh, in fact, I many, many people came to me and said, oh, yeah, I looked at Eric's stuff. I thought it was too hard to understand. Then I looked at your stuff. Then I went back to Eric's stuff. And it's yeah. like, OK, so, you yeah. know, you know, I think the first time I saw you uh, yeah. briefly was in some documentary that was making fun of Flat Earthers. I don't remember what it was. Netflix documentary Behind the Curve. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, which was uh, which was shot in 2017, released uh, towards the end of 2018, and uh, yeah, they didn't like us very much. Uh, they they yeah. did everything they could. You know, they went after Jaron, they went after Bob, they didn't go after Patricia because she was pretty. Uh, they went after Nathan Thompson. They went after basically everybody in that except for um, uh, except for Patricia, and they. Uh, in fact, David David Weiss, who I know you, you've talked to before, yeah. uh, he he actually would have been in it. He was so close to, to being in it, but he hadn't really developed his his content yet. And I think in hindsight, he's like, oh yeah, probably probably glad that he wasn't because yeah. you know they would have taken cracks at him too. But both of you, you you got trolls after you. Uh, you know, even you know Flat Earth Dave, they're like, oh, he's just he doesn't believe Flat Earth. He's just doing this for this and that. You know, right, the, right the drills that they say, you know, like, uh, you're not in it for whatever. Well, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, 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 you go. Oh, well, de denial is a powerful thing. And yeah, I have run into a lot of, I mean, I lost count of the amount of interviews I've done, but a lot of people that had said, I don't believe that you believe it. That their, <laughs> their denial is so, you know, because the, the five stages of acceptance, denial, yeah. uh, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Denial yeah. is so strong for some people, they project it onto you. 
not only do I not believe it, I don't believe that you believe it. It's like you, <laughs> you, you've got to be running a con of some kind. It's like, dude, I've been doing this for nine years. If you know what my con is, I'd love to hear it. Because I yeah. don't know, it's, it'd be like I've 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 been so far in deep cover that I've lost my identity. Yeah, that that's that's got to be it. Yeah, but Whatever. you know how I do it. I, I, of course, if somebody says, "Oh, he's a shield, he's a shield," I I I can look at that, but I judge from uh, from uh, what do you say, first hand experience. You know, I want right. to make my own conclusion about people because you know why? Because right. I wouldn't want people to do that to me. Like if somebody. Right said a bunch of shit about me and uh, i wouldn't want people to just judge me just by hearing things about uh, me from different yeah the, the one of the bad the one of the bad things about social media which i have noticed you know because i'm old enough to remember the internet when it was brand new uh it, is that you people now have a chance there, there's a whole new level of trolls trolls th back in the day in real life could you know don't last very long you know, in school, someone can troll you once, maybe yeah. twice, but eventually they're going to get beat up. They're going to get stuffed into a garbage exactly. can. Somewhere. Exactly. And, yes. and, and when, I remember when it happened, when the first forum forums went out there and then you could, you could almost hear the young, because it's mostly young men, young men winding up, which is like, wait a minute, yeah. I can say anything I want to anybody I want with no repercussions yes. at all. Right, yeah. and and you can hear them like cracking their knuckles. It's like I am going to troll people forever, because my life sucks. And you know this this there's so many layers of trolls. I mean, come on, the the YouTube thing. The reason why they got rid of the thumbs down in YouTube after a number of years, right? Yeah, which was yeah. you could only go like you could watch a video that you could you could have a video about puppies and kittens playing in a children's cancer ward, right? With everybody smiling, you know, those tears coming down your face. And yeah. you will, within a hundred hits, you're going to have some guy in there that says, thumbs down, I hate you, unsub, screw everything and everything you, you enjoy just yeah. because they hate their life. I was like, yep, there, there's yeah. where we are. Yeah, but I also, Mark, I also think one of the reasons they took away the thumbs down yeah. was, uh, you know, Biden. Yes. Uh, his inauguration video. Yeah. Did you know about that? Sure. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 150,000 uh, yeah. thumbs down. Yeah. Yeah. And again, doesn't that tell you? Yeah. Social media is, has yeah. now not, I mean, it started with like Rotten Tomatoes and, and the, the movie companies that invested in Rotten Tomatoes. And then once they got to YouTube, they were like, oh no, no, we're, you know, it's not the truth. It's, it's not objective anymore. It's subjective. So a lot of people don't even hit thumbs up because it's like, what's the point? We can't see the thumbs down. So why hit thumbs up? But you know what I would want to see uh, regarding the thumbs up and thumbs down? I would want to yeah. see a middle finger or a middle thumb, not a middle finger, but middle middle thumb. Because sometimes I might agree with some of what you say and disagree with uh, a bunch of other stuff. Oh, that's not so bad. I want, right? I don't want to give you a full thumbs up, but I like, want to so give like you a So like a, like a medium, yeah. Yeah, but, and yeah. Maybe, maybe that would help. You know, I think a lot of this... Up, uh, thumbs down or thumbs up is is uh, what do you say sitting in the psyche of people because right. we don't have any middle ground anymore in the internet so no add no, something it, in the middle yeah you're right it should be, it should be so like thumbs up thumbs down it should be probably a fist you yeah know, just, a, just a straight right? fist why not that's good why I like it but but yeah. but however your idea is too late because like you said it's so polarized now yeah. there is yeah. no middle ground. You're either yeah. with us or you're against us. So and you know, a lot of, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I mean, that applies to everything nowadays. Yeah. A lot of people want to uh, give full blame to Trump on that thing. And I would say he has some blame in it, but I would also add this though. I think we're in a time where, uh, I think I mentioned this in the, in the other stream that we have become uh, like, it's either the truth side or the lie side, like something has happened in society where we're separated. I don't know. I don't know yeah. if it was Trump that was, you know, unraveling it or like, you know, bringing that up to the surface or what. But even without Trump now, we are so like divided in 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 a sense. I don't know. Yeah, I, it, I don't know you're, you're right. Well, I mean, a lot of it's red team, blue team, or like you said, the people that 
people that that are open minded to the truth and the people that really are stuck in their comfort zones and they don't exactly. want to leave their comfort zones for for whatever reason i mean i'm gonna i'm picking on uh, this week on on my uh, podcast that i do on tuesdays i'm picking on matt walsh for example if you don't know who oh, he yeah. is i know it is. It, it's yeah. like dude it's like you he made a huge mistake which i was, know right it's right. like okay so you do the what is a woman thing which got great response it's like a red team was all for you and people are like oh yeah you you must be red team there before you gotta be open-minded and then he's like yeah. oh by the way the moon missions were absolutely <laughs> real and 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 then when the internet came at him hard right yeah he, he dug in and did an 18 minute rant Yes. against those people without any graphics or anything he just sat there and yelled at the camera for 18 minutes and gave them i mean you could tell he was quoting neil tyson he was quoting elon musk you know without mentioning yeah. their names i was going dude you are so my my show literally this week is called dear matt walsh nasa lies or nasa exactly. lies. yeah exactly. I, it, so like, that what? guy yeah. he became kind of famous because he stated the obvious that men cannot be women right but, right 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 and women cannot be men. He, yep. So he got like, oh, wow, really famous because of that. But I mean, with that video he just did on the moon landing, either he is uh, dishonest or something, or he's not that bright because I don't understand how people cannot tie, you know, uh, what do you say, connect the dots. Like, right. can't he understand that the people that pushes that whole T thing, right? also the people that is lying about the moon landing and the globe and right. the climate and all that stuff. They're all, you know, it's all a web. I, it's the same type of people. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to call him a uh, red team in name only. So he's still a rhino, but a different type of rhino. So he, yeah. he so you want to say Republican in name only, that's fine. I would say red team in name only uh, because if you, seriously, you believe in the moon missions. And I mean, he wasn't shy about it. He wasn't yeah. humming or hawing about it. He's like, moon missions, 100% legit. Why would they lie? Yeah. Why yeah. They and, lie? and, you know, all these crap reasons. And and at the end, I'm I'm going, okay, so you don't believe in any conspiracies. Now, <laughs> you, you may be outraged about the whole man and woman thing, but I mean, I'd be hard pressed. I mean, you, you might as well go to him. I haven't, I haven't looked in his, his back catalog and be like, so what do you think about the shot in the arm? Exactly. Right? What's your I, take about that? Hey, we're going to go into all of that too. Yeah. But in, in, in code, of course. Yeah, of course, in code. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention uh, yeah. before we go into all of this. Uh, yeah. Another guy I connected with, uh, he's, he's from Canada. He's called uh, King Nico. He got, he got super excited when I said I, uh, I, I was going to uh, talk to you. Oh, cool. And he, was, he was wondering, like, can he uh, get in touch with you and maybe do oh. Something. Absolutely, and, and by the way, anyone that get, wants to get in touch with me, um, you know, I doesn't, I don't have to announce it here. You yeah. literally, all you have to do is Google Flat Earth Mark, or just go to the description box of every single video I've ever made, and um, yeah. all my contact info is in there. My email address, my phone number, my home address, everything. You name it. That is, that is the thing that I, I, I was impressed with you. Like you just jumped into my stream uh, the other day. I, I, I didn't yeah. even think it was you. I was like, you're not. I was me. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Who are you yeah. trying to pretend? But they, no. it was you. And no. I think that's a really cool thing to do because <clears throat> I absolutely hate snobbish type of people. You know? <laughs> I, don't, I don't care how many million subs you have. You're still a human. Okay. So right. sit down. You know what I mean? But right. the way you do it is uh, I have to give you uh, credit because that's the way it should be. And okay. you're, also, you're also encouraging people. Uh, people uh, yeah. like you know i think i think the problem with our side or the truth side or whatever you want to say is you know the other side they're very good at um getting together you know uh, yeah our side we're so uh, how do you say it we're so we're, we're uh, clickish i know we're we, yeah we've got our own groups yeah yeah we do our own thing we're too separated you know yeah. what i mean we are. Nothing, nothing works without a team. Nothing. We should I, all team up. As I mean, we, we do we do meetups and, you know, um, well, the last three years we haven't done that many conferences except for Karen. You know, Karen did some wonderful conferences. Uh, but we're, we're ever since the mandates have been lifted, we've been we've been coming back pretty strong. Don't forget that in 2019, before this whole thing happened, right, the whole shot in the arm thing, we were bulletproof. We could do no wrong. 
Uh, I, we had done conferences in seven countries in, in 2019. Uh, we had done, I don't know how many meetups, hundreds of meetups at, at that point. And then, and I remember specifically, and I don't mean to like drop credibility or anything, but I had come back from a talk show in London and they called me and they said, hey, would you like to come back over and do a McDonald's commercial for Pancake right. Day? Yeah, and I was going, yeah, I am absolutely because I've told people I go, look, you can tie me to a chair and throw pies at me if you want. As long as I get as long as I get to say flat earth, I'm fine. Right. And and pay me. And exactly. And pay me. Yeah. I'm not doing it for free. And <laughs> and then I would I mean passports were ready. And then all of a sudden, um, and and we were re ready to go in February of 2020. And then yeah. all of a sudden I get a phone call. It's like, yeah, so the border's closed. and uh, we don't know it's gonna reopen. It's like, oh, and dude, yeah. dude, let me let me let me briefly talk about that because I saw that you got a lot of flack for that uh, commercial you did with uh, oh the one in Australia for the mobile yeah. commercial yeah and they're like how can he do that and I was thinking maybe he's thinking okay first of all I get cash okay let's face it we all need cash we can't yeah. survive without cash okay yeah. he gets cash and yeah okay maybe he you know makes fun of flat earth but at least maybe he's thinking he's pushing flat earth still yeah do you know yeah. what I mean I don't and know. And the VP of that con the VP of that particular mobile company was one of ours. It's not like, and I and I only knew this when I got down there because it was a part of a, a bigger campaign, um, uh, and there were a bunch of different people pretending to be Americans in the room, like beauty queens, for example. There were beauty queens that were walking by, and I yeah. said, um, I said, "Wow, how'd you get Miss South Carolina?" It's like, "No, mate, she's Australian." I'm just going. What? I was going, and, I, and I go, wait a minute. And they go, you're the only American here. And I go, why'd you fly me in? Exactly. You could have had anyone pretend to be a flat earther, right? You didn't have to actually bring me in. And they yeah. said the, the, the VP over there wanted you. And I yeah. go over and meet him. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's absolutely one of ours. But he was never going to say it publicly. And he yeah. wanted, he, and it's like, we didn't have dinner together deliberately. But he was, on, you know, he was watching in the wings at all times. It's like, oh, that's great. Fantastic. And, you know. They they paid they paid well and I used a, a chunk of that money to help promote the um, uh, the Globe Light tour the van tour around Europe, mm -hmm. which was all, and I you know I donated to a whole bunch of flat Earth causes and it was yeah absolutely worth it I'm not gonna I, I do not regret that one for a second yeah. not even a second and and it was last minute I mean it was like ten can, it's like hey can you be in Melbourne in ten days I go for what and they go we want you to do a mobile commercial I'm going for what am I doing and I read the script I'm going yeah I'm there. So there. Well, you know, it might do good because some a lot of people might not even have never heard of flat earth. There you go. Maybe, maybe that will, you know. No, no different than behind the curve, the the <laughs> Netflix documentary, which was people say, oh, you know, the Netflix, it was a hit piece. Yeah, yeah, absolutely was. But you don't understand how many people watched that thing. It was it ran for three years on Netflix, and for the first two, it was like in the top ten of of documentaries, constantly being pushed. And I had so many people that that ran into me that had questions that were exposed yeah. to it because of flat Earth. Um, sorry, I, I know we got to talk about other things, but yeah, I want to yeah, mention yeah. there was a producer, the number of producers, but one specifically said he goes, and and I remember this forever. He goes, he goes, it doesn't matter whether you love or you hate a topic, as long as you're talking about it, as long as you're engaged in it, that's all we care about. You know, in fact, some of the the best villains out there are are because you hate the characters. Everybody from Jersey Shore. Um, uh, one of my favorite would be um, Gordon Ramsay, for example. You know, the chef, Hell's Kitchen, yeah, that yeah, whole thing. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay. People, yeah. oh. people don't understand. In in real life, he is one of the nicest guys yeah. you ever ever want to meet. And then all of a sudden, he does a thing where he be, he pretends to be a villain, and people are like. Oh, I hate that guy so much. I can't stop watching him. And the producer's like, you are now a villain from now until the end of time. And that was it. And it's like, yeah. I, I, every once in a while, he'll slip and he'll go into nice guy mode. And you can tell, I mean, I've, I used to watch some of his early stuff. He was on the BBC. Soft spoken, yeah. real quiet. And but that doesn't like, work. Yeah, nobody right. cared about him back then. It's like, oh you know, God. be an asshole. Start yelling at people. Throw stuff around the kitchen. Right. It's like, that, right. that's, what pe that's what people want. Exactly. So, so exactly what you said. As long as people pay attention, and yeah, yeah. if what if what the thing you're trying to make people pay attention to, if that is the truth, like if it holds truth, yeah, eventually that will you know grow like seeds in people's uh, heads. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so absolutely. Just, 
just get the eyeballs is really the most yeah. important. And yeah, then, if, yeah, yeah. If you can get them engaged, that's that's all that matters. It does not. You again. The one of the sad things about being a flat earther, the only thing, one of the few regrets is you don't get the ability to change somebody in front of you. You're talking to them. You're like, I'm not getting through. I'm not getting through. It's like, you're not supposed to get through. They're going to yeah. get through when they're at home at three in the morning in their underwear typing, you know, it's like, and then all of a sudden it's going to click. Like and yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that you're not going to see them when they do it, but eventually maybe you're going to run into them later. And I've had a bunch of people later. It's like, dude, I totally hated it. And now I'm, I'm there, but yeah, it, the, the, Mark, I, yeah, go ahead. Isn't that, isn't that the same regarding almost everything with truth? Like, Yes. Uh, when we do truth stuff or uh, content that has to do with truth, we yeah. might never really see all of the people waking up to it. As you just said, yeah. it might be in the background. Yeah. So we, we, we kind of have to have faith when we do the truth yeah. stuff. Because yeah. and, and patience. You you don't, again, you, you can't rush it. I, I, every, like over here in the States, you know, we have Thanksgiving and Christmas, which are pretty close yeah. to each other. And I have to yeah. warn people every year. I go, do not go to Thanksgiving and set it up for the table to where everyone's eating dinner. It's like, so Fred, what have you been doing? Let me tell you what I've been doing. I'm into flat earth now. Do not do that ever, ever, ever. Because you, that everyone, that one of the curses of flat earth is by the time you click, once it hits you, you yeah. forget the journey it took you to get there. And it's like, oh, it's so easy. It's so easy. Why didn't I understand this before? I can convince somebody over a cup of coffee. It's like, no, no, you can't. No, don't, don't, do not try. And because you're going to get upset. It's like, because you're, you're looking, it's like, why don't you get this? And yeah. it's like, well, because it's, you know, some people take uh, a couple days. Some people take a couple weeks. Some people take a couple months. Took me nine months to, nine to months. get it. So yeah. the, which year was that? Like when, when you. I looked into it, it um, summer of 2014 and uh, hammered, hammered on it until literally February of 2015. And but I didn't have a lot of content to work on either. Like I had never watched an Eric Dubay video during that time. Yeah. I had watched yeah. Matt Boylan, um, yeah. a couple guys from Europe, a German guy, uh, and a French guy. And what about that black dude from uh, the UK, uh, Dave? Uh, allegedly. Oh, Dave. oh, allegedly Dave. No, hadn't hadn't got to him yet. Yeah. Hadn't gotten to him yet. So there wasn't there there wasn't that much content out there. And so finally, after wrestling with it, I just gave up. I mean, it wasn't like I came to some epiphany. I gave up and put a series of videos out there that was basically just asking questions to the internet. It's like, okay, guys, I can't figure this out entirely. Help me out here. And, and that's why I put my contact information out. It's like, get a hold of me. Get a hold of me. I even put it in the, the early videos. It's like, here's my phone number. Here's my address. Find me and tell me where I'm going wrong here. And I half expected some guy from, you know, some university to call me up and say, all right, here's where you screwed up. And they never mm -hmm. did. To this day, I've, I've, I mean, yeah, I've talked to universities, but not, not directly where they, they, they wanted to debunk it. Now I've got universities that want to talk to me, want me to talk to their classes about yeah. alternative thinking. Yeah. And, the, and the science teachers are like, still, they make mistakes. It's like, we're going to talk to Mark because he's, he, you know, alternative thinking. Now he's wrong, but we're going to talk to him. He's going, that's a terrible idea because you're going to have me talking to your classroom now. And that's going to get in their heads. Yeah, that's crazy. But, yeah. but it's funny that you mentioned 2014 for, because for me, I heard about Flat Earth in uh, 2015. And... Uh, I, I, me personally, I woke up to, you know, conspiracies in like 2006 or something. I had a brother that, older brother that listened to uh, a lot of metal music and uh, satanic shit. But, but he stumbled upon a documentary that uh, had the Illuminati stuff in it. So, so I saw that documentary and I was like, my eyes were opened up to the secret cabal or whatever. Right. Basically, I was open to a lot of conspiracies, but when I heard Flat Earth, I was like, no, 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 that's yeah, bullshit. camping. Yeah. Right? There's, there's, it, there's no way. I'm ashamed of myself uh, because of the way I reacted to Flat Earth because in that very thing, I was kind of like a sheeple. Like, ah, get out of here with that nonsense. What are we, caveman? But something said inside of my, my head, like, you have to at least look at what's going on. What? Why are? Why is there a movement talking about flat earth? And then right. somebody showed me the boat 
the boat zooming back in from the from the horizon. Right. And I was like, hold on. What the fuck? That's not supposed to happen. Right. What is that? So that opened my 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 head to uh, flat earth and then nice. I just dive in more. Yeah. I was embarrassed to click on my first flat earth video. And I mean physically flushed and i was wondering what the hell was wrong with me meaning when i first clicked on my flat earth video i felt it, it was like it, 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 i mean i i caught myself it's like i literally felt the blood rushing to my face i was going what am i clicking on some weird porn that i've never <laughs> seen before seriously it, it like hit me that way it's you know where you're like it's like oh wow i shouldn't be on this page this is some really weird stuff right and, and and I'm like watching a flat Earth video. It's like, yeah, but why did I feel that way? It's like it's it's flat Earth. It's stupid. It's ridiculous. It's not something taboo and forbidden. And yet it was because yeah. you've been conditioned so much over the years, especially over here, where in the states we put the globe usually right underneath the American flag in the classroom. We just that's just where you put it. Yes. We don't tell. Yes. It's not required. That's just where we put it. And uh, there's a lot of people, you know, by the time they graduate high school, it's like, hey, I'm thinking of joining the military. That's the flag. That's where I live. That's what I, you know, I'm willing to defend that. Oh, hey, that's the yeah. globe. That's, that's awesome. also where I live. I'm it willing did. to defend that too. And, yeah. and you know, to David Weiss's credit, you know, he got me along those lines where there were some French guys here recently from a documentary team. And I was asked, I threw it at him and I, I was being rhetorical, but I wanted to say, I'm going, I go here, let me throw this at you. Ready? How fast is the earth traveling? You know, how fast is it spinning? How fast is it go is traveling around the sun? How fast is the solar system going sideways? And how fast is our galaxy moving through the universe? You don't know any of these things, right? No. The, no. but you're willing to defend it. Why are you defending a model? You don't know. Exactly. And, and then uh, all of a sudden, you know, there, you could see their heads, you know, start to start to click a little bit. It's like, yeah. It's because you're conditioned to, you know, you're told. It's like, no, oh, that it's obvious. It's a given. This is what's true. It's like, no, yeah, it's not. It's, it's just the, what you've been told. It's the authority giving you that, yeah. you know, thing. Like, also, it, it also doesn't it have uh, some to do something to do with the TV as well. Like, because they mm. pushed that shit when TV came to the scene, right? They pushed yeah. that shit with yeah. the TV, and you got mesmerized, uh, you know. And it yeah. came from an authoritative uh, place, you know. This yeah. is the globe, you know? And yeah. also, as you said, like, why do they put that shit when we are, like, little kids, like, one through uh, three, four years old? Like, why do we need to see that? Yeah. It's the only thing, by the way, we debunk to children. The only conspiracy out there. We, we don't talk to children about Pearl Harbor or JFK or 9-11 right. or any of that crap. But, but you have the, to brainwash them with the globe. Yeah, but the first thing, it's, oh, yeah, we used to think it's flat, but actually it's this. Here it's going to sit in the corner for the, your next 12 years at least. That's, I mean, CIA pays top dollar for that sort of conditioning. Yeah. And we do it for free. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So so they obviously obviously think it's very important to indoctrinate the kids at, at that very ages because right. otherwise, if the kids are not introduced with the ball, they will not probably believe that shit. No. So, they will say, "Hey, it's flat, man. What do you mean?" It's oh. it's brilliant. the the plan <laughs> The plan worked really well. That and of course, introducing uh, the globe into just about every television and movie over the last 30, 40 years, at least. Uh, yeah. And to where I'm hyper aware of it now. To where every new show you see it, it's like, why is there? It's like, oh, fine. If you have a globe in a classroom because the classrooms on television, it's like, okay, I get that. But why is there a globe on top of that detective's office? He's, he's yeah. in, in Chicago. Why is there a globe in that doctor's office? Why is there yeah. a globe in that billionaire's study for no apparent reason? And I, I get the, the behind the scenes. It is brilliant. It's silent producers. I have heard the stories where you go in. A lot of people know in America, you can donate money to a movie or a television show, right? It's like, oh, here, I want to donate twenty thousand dollars to your to your movie. They say, okay, what do you want? What do you want for that twenty thousand? You want producer credit? What do you What do you want? And it's like, no, no, no. I just want to help set design this one room. And they're going, fine, we'll take your money, right? And and yeah. somewhere along the line, you put in, and they've got various globes of sizes and colors. You put a globe in there. And if the show only runs for one season, it's like, ah, it's fine. But if it runs for eight or nine seasons, that is money well spent. Because you remember, once it's there, it's not like you have to pay every year. It's there for eight or right. nine years. And oh, it's yeah. it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And it, I, subliminally, it works. I think I saw uh, Flat Earth Dave mention that uh, before the moon, moon landing thing, yeah. that 
I don't know if it was Paramount or whatever the, the movie company was, they already had the Globe model. Uh, yes. Done. Yeah, that was in the 30s. Remember, NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So how yeah. did it was universal, by the way? Oh, universal. universal. Yeah, universal. Yeah. So why did Universal have a little little biplane flying around this this globe? Where did you get that? In fact, I'll, I'll use a quote which I've done many times, which is the the George Orwell, you know, who wrote 1984. Yeah. He yeah. did that little article in 1946. And he said, he goes, you he, remember, he wasn't a flat earther, but he, he was talking about how people just believe science no matter what they say, right? It's the new religion, yeah. Yeah, and he goes, he goes, look, you could walk up to him on the street and go, how do you know it's a globe, right? And their first response is, what are you talking about? We know, it's, it's a known thing, right? And then you wow. look at him and you say, no, 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 how do you know it's a globe, yeah. right? Yeah. And then they realize, it's like, wait a minute, I was just told it was a globe. And you know, you, we didn't test it. So how did everybody in the world in 1946 know it was a globe uh, when NASA wasn't even founded until 1958? And and I know people will say, "Oh, math, math, math." It's like, nope, math describes things. Math isn't, in, you know, math. Math will only get you so far. Eventually, you got to go up there and check for yourself. So yeah. how? And again, it, it, f people feel bad because they feel like they were tricked. But it's like, no, no, no. You were born into this. It was it was before yeah. your father and your father's father going back so many generations. That, yeah, you know, we didn't have a and chance. You know, you know, Mark, when when I was a glober, yeah. uh, I don't know when I was like maybe. I mean, when I was young and I believed in the globe, right. I was always thinking about like, why aren't there more people thinking about that we're spinning on a ball? in a endless galaxy yeah. or whatever i think i know or i have a guess why because uh, uh not until you mention to the sheeple that we are on a on a globe spinning through space will right. they ever think about it and my guess is that's because subconsciously they don't think we are on a globe spinning in galaxy so you have to remind them that right. we are globe spinning in a galaxy. Yeah, you're reminding people how small and insignificant they are. Yeah. You know, be beforehand, it's like, oh, no, it's a big world. You're walking around in it. But it's like scientists will remind you. Now it's on a daily basis. It's like, oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. You are in... You, you are in this tiny little rock flying through an impossibly huge universe, and you could be snuffed out at any time. There are yeah. threats everywhere there's gamma ray bursts and black holes and meteorites and oh the yeah. sun could explode and all sorts of fun stuff and and but yeah you're right they have to remind you all the time yeah. because the average so, person doesn't care the average person's like how does that affect the price of beer yeah because they they don't ever feel any spin or any any shit like that so, no so, no let me ask you uh, mark uh yeah. i want to ask you about they say that light can travel uh like they say that if we're going to believe the globe nonsense, they say that the sun, the rays from the sun, they're like from eight minutes ago because they have traveled right. Right. to you. Right. I, I, I don't know. You know, I'm not an expert on any of this. I just I just have a good critical mind. So I'm right. thinking, uh, doesn't light, isn't light like fixed to the light source? Meaning, like, uh, if I have a lamp, it has a certain light that reaches a certain, you know, length, and that's it. Sure. Or, or, or is light, or can you send light, like you're sending package of something? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, I, I can only tell you from the the simulations we've done over the years, which I, I'm a big believer in simulation theory anyway. Me too. Uh, because. I mean, I, I come, I come from the computer world, and uh, that's that's what we've always strived to do. And the early simulations, for example, there was no sun and the moon. There was just we just lightened and darkened the sky. Mm -hmm. So, do I think, for example, that the sun is the only light source that's helping light up this place? No, because that's not what we do. In now, we show the sun, and we can show some corpuscular rays and do some fun stuff with it. But that's not what lights up the rest of the world. There's a whole other lighting mechanism, mechanism that lights up the rest of the world, again, when we're creating simulations. Yeah. And I have said for a number of years that the simulation worlds that we make really give a lot of hints to where we are, no, notably the double split. Video games and virtual yes. reality, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah virtual yeah. reality. Um, 
uh, the Matrix. We got to talk, th- talk about this, Mark, because I both okay. I, I've worked with uh, VR when I made I made a music soundtrack to uh, Tarzan VR. Oh, cool. So I've, I've been working with VR headsets, but I also made my own little games as well, like 2D games. But sure. I, I really want to talk about stuff like that as well with you. But but do you think because in a video game when you put a light source there? like this simulation of a sun right you know the 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 light is still fixed to that ball or whatever and you move that ball around and then the light moves with the ball you know what i mean like right uh, programming thing i kind of think it's i kind of think it's the same thing in this simulation because i believe this is a simulation as well yeah yeah i i do too uh i wouldn't wouldn't surprise me in the slightest um again the the double slit experiment, if you guys don't know, if you haven't never looked it up, it, it's something that we didn't even know what it meant when we discovered it in physics. And then when we start doing the computer world, it's like, oh, hey, now it makes way more sense, which is in the, in the computer world, you only render graphics for things you are looking at. Exactly. Right? Whatever's behind you in a video, it's called flashlight graphics. You might as well be in a completely black room and your field of view is a flashlight. The question is, is that why does that happen here? Meaning um, when you're the, 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 the double slit experiment says that whatever you're not looking at is not being rendered entirely, yes. completely. And, and yes. I, physics, do, physicists don't know what to do with it. They're, but they're, I love science's lo- logic, which is, well, it's repeatable. Therefore, it's science. I was going, yeah, but it might as well be magic because you can't yeah. understand it. You just say yeah. the observer creates the reality. It's like, yeah, but that's what we're doing in computers. So you might want to yeah. make the, the leap there, but they, but they won't do it. And it's like, no, it's repeatable. Therefore, it's science. It's like, yeah, I get it. Sort of like airplanes. Um, you know, they, uh, the physicists will tell you, by the way, they can't tell you exactly why airplanes fly. A lot of people don't know that. You know, there's mm-hmm. there's a couple different theories behind it. They know approximately how they fly, but they don't know exactly how they fly. The point is, because it's forever repeatable, the plane goes from point A to point B and nobody dies. Hey, you know what? It's science. Let's just go with it. It's like, yeah, yeah but you can't completely explain it. It's like, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. The plane works. The plane yeah. works. It's funny that you mentioned that thing with rendering. I think there was a guy called Thomas Campbell. Uh, he's like a guy that talks about life being a simulation. He also said, "Yeah, behind you, it's not rendered until you turn around because it's unnecessary. Like it's using the computer power. Absolutely. Why Why draw it? Or, or not just the stuff behind you, the stuff off in the distance, which I say, look, there's a mountain way off in the distance in a video game. Do you yeah. get to see the other mountain, the other side of the mountain as a character? No. Yeah. Well, then why would you draw it? Well, you wouldn't. Apply yes. that to everything, even the, the micro side of it, which is unless yeah. you're zooming into the every blade of grass, then why render everything that's going on with a blade of grass? Exactly. Uh, and, exactly. Oh, yeah, go. Sorry. Well, go well and, and to that point with the sky. And, you know, fine, you have telescopes. You have a telescope you can zoom in, but I, I think until you have the ability to zoom in, it's only going to show you the, the rough stuff. You know, it's like, oh, okay, there's some stars, but you can't, you can only see the first layer of stars. Now, when you get a telescope, sure, we'll zoom yeah. in for that, but but we're not going to, we're not going to help you out. And that's what we do with everything. You when got a little bit blurry right now. I don't know. Why. Oh, we did? Oh, crap. Yeah, Hang on. The, com- the computer of life tries to save a little bit computer power. There we go. Yeah, a little bit better. Sorry, I was I was blending into the matrix just then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, it's funny because when I when I was working with the VR thing, yeah, it was so crazy because when you put that shit on, even though even though the graphics is not that good, your brain believes that you are in that world, like more or less, more or less. I mean, it it's, still it's only not. touches on the two senses, but yeah, sure. it's it's sure. getting there. But, I know, but visually, visually, it, it fools your brain. So yes, it does. There must be some correlation there with you know our reality. Vi- vi- visually, that's our weakest uh, thing. If you've never looked it up, um, they did a study with um, wooden cars years ago. In fact, you know this. Uh, anyone that's listening, when you're in stop and go traffic, or maybe on a train, or maybe on a plane, right? But usually in traffic is when free people freak out the most. All of a sudden, you're zoning out, like right? you're stop and go traffic. Then all of a sudden, the car next to you is moving. And for the briefest second, you're like, wait a minute, did I take my foot off the brake? Or is he, or, you know, is it me or is it him? Human uh, be- yeah. And so they tested this with, with wooden cars where they put people in a wooden car 
and they would either move the car or they would move the wall in front of them. Human beings cannot tell what is what. We are, it is our huge, huge weakness. It was almost, we were designed for a simulation. And let me, let me talk about this for a second, which is the reason why I bring up flat earth yeah. is because most people still to this day, even though we are decades down the road, can't understand the concept of virtual reality, which is look, the, the matrix turns 25 years old this year, uh, 25 years ago, there was the matrix came out. Yeah. It was, yeah. it came out in 99 and uh, I would love to bring up virtual reality and the double slit experiment and neuroscience versus free will and stuff like that. But people do not still cannot get their heads around it uh, for whatever reason. So the closest I can get is like oh, flat earth because every simulation we make, by the way, is flat. In fact, it's right. not just not plain. Yeah. It's not just flat. It's in a box. Like the, yeah. the, the, the very famous um, Skybox rendering system is called Skybox. Now we can simulate, and that is because in engineering, sorry, sorry let me go off on a quick tangent, which is yeah, look, yeah, computers, computers can't draw circles. A lot of people don't know this. It's like they can only draw what uh, the illusion of a circle, meaning that's why pixels are square. This right? is, hold on, Mark. This is what? crazy. This is crazy. Because what? I have pulled up this very, very thing about the circle. Let me prove it to you right now. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. That's weird. I don't know. Hold on. Let me let me see if you, if you can see it here. Hold on. Hold on. That's yes. me. Oh yeah, that's you. Hold on. That, <laughs> hold on. That's your background. Okay, hold on. That's all right. Uh let me put you here. Oh, that's that circle. This is so weird that you mentioned it because I wanted to bring this up with you. Uh yeah. because if you zoom into a circle it becomes squares like yeah. like even even a circle let me come back even a uh, even a circle is made out of straight lines like if you if you point from the middle yeah. to whatever you know it, it's straight lines it's it's right angles yeah absolutely because try to think those those that are out there that think they're pretty smart how do you tell a computer to draw a circle how do you do it and it's like you can't the closest you can get is just these tiny little steps and for anyone that's old enough to remember the really old video game systems there were no circles in the really old video game yeah. systems. they were all they were all just freaking clumps of squares because we didn't have the resolution the only thing that's changed now is the resolution and the pixels have gotten so small that the human eye can barely detect them I, in fact, yeah. I have a theory that is if you try, if a human being tried to draw a circle naturally or any sort of curve, I bet you if you zoomed in on a microscopic level, right. you probably see a whole bunch of little squares because right. that, that's what we do. Well, basically, you could say there is no such thing as a curve if you dig, dig deep inside of it. Well, yeah, yeah. I but mean, it's, what is a curve? If you look right, at this right, here, right. It's the it, it all engi all engineering is done in squares. I mean, everything we build when you look at the engineering models, it's done. Yeah. It's done with squares. Now, granted, there's going to be some curves in there, but those curves are are taken apart by dividing up squares, right? Yeah. In 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 shallow shallow angles, which is what we do yeah. in human life. Again, anyone that the seriously, computers cannot draw circles. Tell me how they draw circles and event, and then like you just did there, you think you've got it fine. Zoom in. I'll show you how the whole thing gets wrecked because yeah. until, pixels will always be squares. It's easier to do programming wise, way easier. Yeah. yeah. Way and, easier. And, and another thing I, I always say is, uh, you know, our 3D reality, mm -hmm. it kind of looks 3D. But is it 3D or is it 2D giving you the illusion of 3D? Like, um, mm. yeah, that, then you're going into a whole nother thing, which is which is what you, yes, the virtual reality. Thank you for mentioning that, by the way, which is anyone that knows programming realizes that things like Fortnite and GTA and Minecraft and Warcraft, they're really 2D, but, they, but obviously they're 2D. You know, it's not right. like, you're, you're, you know, the computers, you know, the hard drives are flat, right? Yeah. You are, you are creating a, the illusion of 3D with a 2D system. And yeah. we, we learned to do that back in the 90s, uh, you know, when we really got into 3D modeling and it, we just improved it from there. But the, the concept has never changed. You're absolutely right. It is Even it us is, right now, me and yeah. you right now on this screen, right. we are 2D on the screen. Right. 100%. 100%. Absolutely. 
but it looks 3D because of the technology. Oh, you, I, I'll, I'll, you know what? Let's go a step further. I'll blow your mind. You ready? You ready for this? There's a chance. There's a there's a pretty good probability, in my opinion, that it's not that we're even in a three. We're obviously not in a 3D real time situation, and here's why. And you're young enough to probably know this. There's a lot of kids now that don't even play their own video games. They watch YouTube videos of other oh, yeah. people playing video games, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. And they get almost the same sensation. Uh, in doing it and is actually playing the game themselves that's why they're so popular it's like why do i have to play i'll just watch this guy play i don't even want to play my own character you know, i'll just sit in the couch and, and watch this guy play but Amazing. what blows your mind is is that when you're watching it unless you're talking about some live streaming thing when you're watching it you're not even watching a network type situation you're just watching a little mp4 video piping through youtube the resources are very 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 small yeah. So then it's like, wait a minute, and you're getting the same, almost the same sensation. So yeah. who's to say, I'm saying that we might not even be in a real time <laughs> scenario. We may be in a pre-record that you set the whole thing up ahead of time. Because again, if you're in this, you want to, you know, you'd pick your highs and lows and, and the moments. And then you, all you do is you do a memory block before it starts. And that's, yeah. that's all it comes down to is memory which is if yeah. you don't have any memory of what this place was before going in and you made the decisions, oh yeah, it's everything you, you'd want before, you know, and it's like, well, why would I pick that I broke my leg or, you know, I had a family member die or any of this other crap. Yeah. It's like, yeah, well, a hero's journey isn't a hero's journey without, you know, some exactly. sort of rise and fall, right? You have to go through it. You know, um, I don't know if you have trust fund kids over where you are, but, you know, if, you're, oh. if, you, grow up, if you grow up rich, right? If yeah. you grow up rich, you're ruined. It's over. You you got nothing. You know you you have no inspiration. The hero's journey has to come somewhere. There has to be peaks and valleys. Adversaries, yeah. yeah. From so adversaries, and yeah. and it would be way more efficient to do that ahead of time than to create some sort of massive integrated real time situation. And then of course it leads into how many people are. If that's the case, right? How many people are really involved? Meaning. Are you the only one that's, you know, are you one of a handful of people that's real in this scenario? Ooh, Am I, I know. Yeah. And then it gets yes. kind of spooky. Yeah. You know, you know, when I heard that first, there was this lady called Dolores, old lady. She's dead now. But uh, she said, <laughs> she's dead. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's dead now. But okay. I don't think, I don't, I don't think we ever died. We just switched to a uh, sure. Sure. different video, video game. But there you go. she said, she said, not everybody has a soul. And some people are just NPCs, but you think they're real. But she's like, if you're in, at the grocery store, right. you think all of, all of the people that you see there, that they are real. But she's like, they're not. But if you decide to interact with them and maybe follow up and go to their home and things like that, then the simulation renders that so that it doesn't give up the cover. Bing, it, it, bingo. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause you don't want, yeah. Otherwise it gives it away. Absolutely. Right. Crazy. There are, I am a huge believer. I'm really surprised the movie, uh, the Ryan Reynolds movie free guy didn't resonate with more people because, you I know, cause seen that. Free oh, guy. you gotta, you gotta watch it. If you, yeah, free guy and free, free guy. guy was literally about the life of NPCs, which was, there was a world that, that cause a lot of people, if you don't know, when you build a video game system, right? You pop at least nowadays. You populate yeah. like GTA, perfect example. Yeah. Yes. You populate the whole city with NPCs, non-player characters, right? There's an army of NPCs there before the first player even shows up, and that's what yeah. Free Guys about. It's like, what do they do when there are no players in the game? What do the NPCs do? And it's like, oh, that's pretty interesting. But the <laughs> the question is, in a world like this. And I'm not going to pick on any professions in general, but yeah, you see yeah. people walking around. It's like, and that's what they're doing. Oh yeah, this is what they've done for the last 40 years. It's like, yeah, well, no one would sign up for that voluntarily. Yeah. But yeah, so is there, are there, if that was the case, then most, I'm not going to give a percentage, not necessarily, but most of the people you interact with are probably NPCs. And to the woman's point, they only get fleshed out if you interact with them directly, it's like, oh, hey, yeah. I'm going to da date that waitress from that restaurant. She now yes. has a backstory. Now, does that mean she's self-aware? Not necessarily, but at least she's got a backstory. Oh, and, and maybe later on, she can just turn into an Agent Smith, you know, like. Oh, oh I, well, well, which leads into the <laughs> wonderful movie. If you've never seen it from, uh, I, they say 1999, but I'm pretty sure it was 98 yeah. when it was released was the 13th Floor. 
fantastic oh, yeah, movie. If, you, that, if yeah. you've never seen The 13th Floor, which was based on a book from the 60s called Simulacron 3, which okay. was, again, from the 60s, it was a really bold thing, which was when you create a simulation, which why we'll never get to that point. When you create a simulation that you can dive into completely, right, with all your senses to where you have no idea, you know, like the holodeck or, or the matrix, yeah. Yeah. then when you come out of it, how do you know you're out of it? Meaning, meaning it's like, wait a minute, you know, all of a sudden the, the lines get blurred, which is I, I do not think that we'll be ever allowed. And I don't think it'll happen medically because, I mean, plugging into your senses means you're going to have to plug literally into the brain like like the Matrix. When um, when when you get into that sort of level of virtual reality, how do you know where you are? And the 13th floor touched on this, which was a simulation within a simulation which was by the time the, the researchers in that movie were figuring out what was going on, it's like, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. Because you know, everything they saw in there was happening here. And they're like, yeah. and, and all, you know, then, then everything started to blur, which is a, because if we create a simulation here where we can dive in, the second we do, this world becomes meaningless, which is why well, I don't think it, it's ever allowed to happen because then no one would care about anything else. Well, Mark, I disagree with you here. And let me tell okay. you why. I think that is actually the end goal. Okay, let me tell you why. Okay. Because first of all, I don't know if you've seen the Unreal Engine 5. It's like the craziest engine. I have. I have. Uh, it's sick. It, 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 it yeah. renders just as we talked about before. It only, like if you look closely to the ground and see rocks and shit, it makes the rocks perfect. It's right. not blocky or nothing. But when you zoom out, it reduces the polygons sure. and, you know, puts it somewhere else. Anyways. So I think the end goal is to actually somehow put our brain with all of the senses into a virtual reality, which is in this thing. We are, we are trying. You're absolutely right. We are trying. We, in fact, because again, I come from the video game world. We have been, that is the ultimate goal. They've been trying for decades. Was like, yeah, because once they do it, no, they could say it is the ultimate saleable thing. Everyone would buy it. Absolutely. Well, okay, Mark, but let me tell you this. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know how you see uh, religion and things like that. I, I, I do want to ask you about religion and stuff like that. But sure. I, I do, I'm not religious, but I b believe in a creator 100% and, right. the, and that the devil exists. So if the devil exists and he wants your soul right. and he wants to be like God, but he can never be like God, what is the next best, what is the next best thing for the devil to do? create a virtual reality which looks like this one right where you jump into that one and if they can keep your brain there alive i don't know how you do that but if they could yeah hooked, hooked into that reality then the devil or whoever controls that virtual reality would become god in that world not in this world but in that world and kind of kind of uh you know trap your soul in there for a, however long they can keep your brain alive right you know? and that right. would be hell uh, to me that would be potentially hell. Yeah. yeah yeah so <clears throat> so but just as you said it has to have no flaws because i believe if we saw flaws in this reality we would question this as well Right. But we don't we don't really see any flaws here. No, well, I mean no, no, nothing obvious and nothing consistent. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh so, it's well, I mean, come on, the, the best programs, there there are games out there which are almost bulletproof. Yeah. You know, even still, games that we make. It takes yeah. a while, you know, but I think the early versions of this were were a little rougher. Uh and yeah. th this has been sort of a, a work in progress. But to your point, let me let me get this out there, which yeah. is when the the problem with with us trying to create the ultimate virtual reality thing is eventually you have to hook up the other three senses, right? So right now we have sight and sound, yeah. But um, but taste, touch, and smell, that's gonna require some medical stuff. And right now, how our system is set up, we don't have. And and it really comes. Out, I hate to say this because it's not a cop out though. We, it always comes down to the lawyers, which is the lawyers will stop us from from going too far because legally. 
you never want to put yourself w w in an actionable situation. I'll, I'll give you an example really quick. Um, the Purge movies, right? Purge movies, they've done like five of them already, right? Purge, great concept. I love the concept. It's like, oh, wow, blowing off some steam. Never, ever, 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 ever going to happen in real life. Why? Because the insurance companies and the lawyers would never, ever let it happen because the, what happens is that night, oh, they focus on people shooting each other. Oh, no, there'd be buildings burning everywhere. The insurance damage would be massive. The, the insurance system would collapse over it. And that's just the purge. Imagine trying to hook up. I don't care what Elon says about Neuralink. I don't care. Elon, I hate the guy. He, he just talks smack constantly. He is nowhere even remotely legit. He is a freaking South African puppet for the United States government. Has always been since minute one. Uh, but to hook up those other three senses would re require something medical. The, that's the only way we can do it right now. There's no wireless way, and even if there was a wireless way, the bandwidth would be scary, right? You know, because you'd have to point something directly in, you know, whatever. But it would be something that would be medically iffy. It would be medically controversial, and if there were any side effects at all that were harmful, that product would be banned. I mean, come on, look at the what, remember the Google Glass thing. It was going yeah. on for a little while where yeah. people yeah. or even or even that what was it was it the pokemon thing where you were walking around cities pokemon trying to find, go yeah yeah how'd that turn out yeah people died and then yeah. nobody nobody talked about it anymore because like oh yeah yeah or 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 to one more real quick which is self-driving cars right even mercedes yeah. has said it's like yeah we can do a self-driving car if it drives in stop and go traffic in the middle of a freeway right slow it's like Anything outside of that, it's your ass because yeah. there's no way we're going to guarantee it. But but I, I, I kind of see it like this. I yep. see it like there is an evil force that will eventually aim to make this happen. I don't know when, but that is the end goal. You know why, Mark? Because look at our real world today. Mm -hmm. They're making it more and more boring. Like uh, we don't interact anymore as we use, used to. True. You know, like, like human beings. We don't. True. Yeah, we we text and do shit like that, but we're losing touch with reality. And it, I think they might be doing that on purpose, making it more and more boring and making video games and shit like that more exciting. And what better is there than to put on a, a VR headset that looks exactly like reality and you can go wherever you want, travel wherever you want. Do whatever you want. Even porn is there. Everything is there. You know? Right, right, right. And it might even look better than this reality with higher resolutions than what your eyes see or something. Right. You know? Make yeah, it more we, exciting for the people. And then possible. when they look at reality, they're like, ah, that's boring. This is better. It's know? possible. I mean, the sci-fi novels. Have what was the thing that just came out? Was it the, the What was the new headset that just came out? Um, uh, Apple something. Uh, Apple, Apple, whatever it is. It's like, what was uh, that, like 3500 bucks? Woo. That's a little yeah. steep for the average yeah. consumer. And eventually, eventually that will go down. Yeah, it'll it'll go down. I don't know. I mean, yes, you're I'm sorry. Two two parts real fast. Do I think yeah. yes, you're absolutely right. The sinister forces of this world want it to happen. I don't think that for lack of a better term, God will let that happen entirely because mm -hmm. at that point it diminishes his realm and and by the way, you're you're lying about the, the devil created virtual reality. That's actually a pretty good book concept, which is the devil creating a, a virtual reality, kind of like the Matrix. But I, I go a different track, which is I think, I think the devil is basically just an employee of God and always has been. Remember, God supposedly created the devil. Therefore, the devil has purpose. Therefore, God has a plan. And the devil is just a, um, a major, he's the antagonist on the stage that eventually kind of like, um, do you remember the old movie? And people missed this, which was um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the first one. The, yeah. From 19, 1970 with Gene Wilder and the original kids and all that. Is that the, the guy movie. behind the curtain? The guy behind the curtain, um, yeah. Mr. Mr. Slugworth, right? Well, mm -hmm. the thing about Mr. Slugworth, what they glossed over at the end was he shows up and, and Willy Wonka's like, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. He works for me. The whole thing was a freaking setup. All the kids were set up to freaking fail. And in fact, Charlie almost failed at the very end and he ended up getting the thing. But the point was, is that Willy Wonka completely, there was no randomness. Willy yeah. Wonka created the, the whole thing, which leads me into uh, my final point on this, which is uh, the old argument. You probably heard this before. Uh, Einstein said that God doesn't play dice, right? And then Stephen Hawking, you know, the big argument. It's like, and, but, but 
question what you want about Einstein's math. He was a very, very clever and very, very quotable man. And my point was, it's like, no, God doesn't play dice because God wrote dice. Therefore, God can't play dice the way you and I play dice. We throw the dice. We have no idea it's going to happen. God would know every single freaking time. So God yeah. wants to play dice. And I think that for him to throw a billion dice on the, on the floor, he has to temporarily forget that he wrote dice. Yeah, in order but, for, for, him, for him to enjoy it. But it's funny that you talk about that. Have you heard Alan Watts, this guy from, uh, it's like a guru from the 70s or something. And yes. uh, uh, he has a theory that we're, that we are God. Like, he's like, if you were God right. and you dream the best dreams you can ever dream, blah, 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 all of the pleasures you can ever have, blah, 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 the experiences, uh, the, the most fantastic experiences you could ever have. Right. He's like, eventually you will get bored of that. And maybe now you're going to dream an experience where you forget that you're God. There you blah, go. Blah, 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 blah. And he says, basically, that's where you are right now. Basically, he's saying God has <clears throat> turned himself into something that has forgotten that it, that it is God in order to experience something crazy yeah, yeah absolutely and that that is a i that is a concept which has been touched on in various things over the years um my favorite was the the movie dogma with ben affleck and matt damon which was okay. the god god forgot that he was god and went to play um um street hockey on the east coast in jersey <laughs> you know and then got and somebody figured it out and it's like oh hey we can trap him while he's still you know just this guy walking around and he didn't build yeah. any safeguards which was the whole concept of the movie but yes i i love that concept uh or that you know there are Who knows, guess, right yeah Who knows? exactly the, the big the big mystery of this place but i do believe that um let me go into one more thing yeah, which yeah, is yeah. we are i believe it's cyclical you know, because people have often asked me, it's like, what's outside of this place? You know, it's like, well, you got to look at where we are because we can only describe what we see around us, right? We're yeah. in a world that's 99.9% .9 conflict, right? It doesn't matter how beautiful, how powerful, how rich, how talented you are. Everybody bitches about something. Doesn't really yeah. matter. I mean, you know, if I, you may the mo be the most gorgeous person in the world. I've seen it. All they do is stare at the mirror all day and wait for everything to collapse. Or the yeah. money people care about money. Talented people think they're frauds and so on and so on and so on. If that's the case, then whatever is outside of here has to be 99.9% .9 unlimited. I call it the near perfect, which is, uh, I call it the, the genie scenario. You probably know it from, from your, your neck of the woods, which is the genie, the, the genie in the lamp story. You know, you rub the rub the lamp. Jimmy comes out, gives you three wishes. You're clever. It's like <laughs> unlimited wishes, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so you run you run through your your cycle, like you were saying. You dream everything yeah. you could possibly dream. You date everyone you want to date. You were a rock star. You were an athlete. You were a king. Yeah, you were everything. whatever you wanted to. Well, the problem is, is eventually the novelty runs out. Right? right. A Twilight episode touched on this years ago, which was eventually it runs out. And then what do you do? And he's yeah. like, oh, my God. And so you're going back to the genie and you're like, I'm not done yet. Right. You're, you're still hanging around for a couple more centuries doing whatever you want. And then you're like, OK, I'm I'm run out of ideas. What do I do? Yeah. Right. Is there anything you can do to help me? And the genie goes, yeah, yeah, I got some ideas for you. Here's one. I go, I'm going to send you to a place. You're going to hate it. Right, a million ways to die. One way in. In fact, uh, uh, there's. But if you last the 70, 80 years or whatever it is, when yeah. you come back here, you're gonna yeah. treat this like it's brand new. And, and, and the genie goes, "You, you, you want to do this?" He goes, "I don't know. It kind of sounds kind of bad." He goes, "Trust me, it'll be great." And, and he goes, "What's the catch?" And the genie goes, "The catch is, you're not even gonna remember this conversation." And he snaps his finger, Thanos style, and. Voila, you are you are here because it wouldn't that make sense? You can't yeah. you've heard the saying you can't have your cake and eat it too, right? Yeah, yeah. You can't live this life, know where you came from, and still live this life because this life would become meaningless. If because it kind of like the gaming world, you've you've done this in the gaming world, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you had the ability to bail on this world, people would bail at the first sign of trouble. <laughs> It's, it's like, oh, I had a bad breakup. Where's the nearest bridge? I'm jumping, right? <laughs> yes, so it's like, yes. it's, it's like, oh, I just lost all my money. I'm going to throw myself into traffic. It'd be, it yes. would be very similar to uh, that Tom Cruise movie, which was um, uh, Edge of Tomorrow, otherwise known as Live, Die, Repeat, where he was the soldier that just kept dying over and over, which was basically a video game scenario. 
where he just yeah. kept bailing and bailing and bailing until finally he yeah. got the, the video game. It was basically a video game movie. So yeah. that's that's where I that's where I kind of think we are. It's cyclical. You you are only here to. I'm a huge believer. Sorry, I got to get this out. Yeah. Which is, I'm a huge believer in dualism, and I know some people say, "Well, isn't that like a Masonic thing?" It's like, no, dualism is everywhere. Which is, you can't appreciate something without the opposite. The hero yeah. is great, hot without cold, plain without pain without pleasure, um, light without shadow. Right? You cannot right. appreciate one without the other. And so, why, how could you even begin to appreciate some sort of Nirvana, Nirvana Shambhala? heaven type scenario unless you went through a place like this and i'm not saying this is necessarily hell i mean you can make this yeah. a lot worse right you could set everything yeah. on fire i suppose yeah but yeah but this place just screams that there's a better place out there yeah you get your moments of reprieve here there's some moments of of, of pleasure and some satisfaction but it's very very limited isn't it i mean yeah, you could be a monk down. in the himalayas you know, in a in a cross-legged position, hovering three feet off the ground in perfect harmony, and you're still going to have to deal with mortality, or you're going to get hungry. One of the yeah. two. It's Sorry. funny that you mentioned the dualistic thing. Uh, you know, even the dimensions. You know, we live in a three D uh, world, right? But it's still based off of the two things. You know, left, right, up, down, in, out. There even you if you add, even if you add another dimension, it will still be somehow based on two axes or whatever right but it's funny that you talk about that thing i want to quickly say this you know sure. uh, uh, who knows how many incarnations we've had or maybe who knows how many times we've lived exactly this uh, version of life right how many times you've been mark Sargent, doing exactly everything you've done uh sure just a slight difference you know yeah so, kind of like the movie Groundhog's Day. You know, have you seen that? But oh, many different. times, many times. <laughs> Wonderful movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. Fantastic. Yeah. Kind of like that. You know, we don't know. I don't even remember what I did last week. You know, <laughs> Monday. You know what I mean? But yeah. did that, does that mean that that didn't happen? No, it did happen. So, right. just because we don't remember our previous lives doesn't mean that it hasn't happened absolutely I mean? and that's what makes it so worthwhile i think you get big chunks of that memory back when you go when you go back to wherever you came from so again awesome. it it yeah. it it uh, I'm, I'm stealing from a lot of movies but that's because i, I watch a lot of movies um okay. the the movie lucy with uh, scarlett johansson where she okay. was defining defining at the end you know where she became the omnipotent by the time she got to the end where she was explained to the scientist she goes she goes you know what defines us what defines us here is time more than anything, time has relevance here. Time means everything here. Um, we we create the illusions, like in up here, for example, uh, in our casinos, we yeah. remove all the clocks and we remove all the windows so people don't know what time it is, you know, yes. or, or can even guess what time it is. You're not even allowed to look outside to see if it's light or dark, you yes. know, because uh, uh, because of that. So time defines us, and so if that's the case here, then whatever's outside of here, I think the afterlife doesn't have really have clocks. I mean, yeah, time passes, but, but it's meaningless. You know, it, it, why, if you're immortal, then what does time got to do? With anything? You know, it's funny that you mentioned time. I, I want to uh, touch on two things with time. Sure. The first thing is this quickly. The first yeah. thing is this. I was an atheist before, uh, I was an atheist before I, I believed in, in a creator because I was, uh, you know, I was trying to, uh, I was trying to solve the question of who created God, if there is a God, and who created that God, and who created that God. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and not until I realized, hold on, uh, I'm trying to apply what I know in this reality, in this virtual reality, to the creator. The, uh, the creator has never been created or destroyed. The creator, the creator has always existed, but... Right. In a stream, endless stream of time, but right. created a beginning and an end for me in this reality, just like a video game. Like here is the start point and here is the end point. Right. Uh, and that is really creation and destruction, whatever. Right. So th then I was like, of course, of course, there's a creator. You know, the, 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 the creator never g got created by anybody. It has always been there. Right. So, uh, so once I realized that, uh, to me, there was a light bulb, like, bam, I believe in a God. But religion, right. though, I, 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 I don't know about religion. I, I want to say something about sure. that with sure. you later. But another thing is I want to I ask you, what do you think time is? 
because I think time maybe is something like a switch from one state to another, like like frame rates in a video game. Without yes. frame rate switches, everything would be still, right? Yes. Yeah. So is yeah. that what time is? If you're going to break it down. Well, yeah, for me, that's you're, you're pretty much spot on there, which is time, for me anyway, is artificial boundaries put into a stream to <sighs> define moments. And by that, I'm or define lifetimes or define just events in general. Um, I, Einstein's quote was pretty good where, he, you know, he said time... Time, linear time happens just to make to make sure th everything doesn't happen at once. Yeah, so, nah, that's pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. But I think yeah. time makes things worthwhile. You know, it, it's like creating rooms in a house. If you yeah. don't have the rooms in a house, you just got a big, huge freaking room. Yeah. Uh, you know, even I, I even believe that the, the afterlife or what uh, what I call the near perfect. They the rooms are much. What, what's the line from the Bible? Uh, my father's mansion has many rooms, or uh, something like that. But but I, I think in in the afterlife, I think they try to define rooms, but it's really really loose. It's sort of like a dream state where things kind of flow into one each other. Here it's very regimented. Uh, yeah. But without it, I mean, come on, that's that's how we were. That's how we were built. But yeah, to your point, it yeah, it won't work. It won't work if, if if there aren't states that are switching, like a no. you know, like a movie, you know, like a cartoon, or whatever. You know, where you got these right. different different frames. Yeah, uh, every and, everything is compartmentalized here. Every book, yeah. every television show, every podcast, every everything is compartmentalized. That that is yeah. part of what defines us. Yeah. And I, and of course, all of that is inside of linear time. Although yeah. for me, time again, which is why I'm fascinated with time travel movies and time loop movies, anything that has yeah. to do with time is I'm a huge believer that time can be compressed and fractionalized almost infinitely, which is why, you know, you get that thing where uh, you wake up from a dream and you realize you, you've only been dreaming for like 10 minutes, right? But but it lasted a very very long time, and it's like yeah, yeah. that's because time can be com com can be compressed, kind of like the the movie the, the movie Contact, which I loved at the end, which is why I know, why I, so many people didn't get it, which was she yeah. goes, what are you talking about? I just left. I was gone for eighteen hours, yeah. right? And then yeah. when he looked at the footage, he's going, you know, they realized like oh, there was eighteen hours of static on her video camera. It's like huh, you know, it's like yeah, because they compressed time. Yes. Which is why when when you leave to to come back, uh, you know, like when you come here, yeah, we spent eighty years here, give or take, right? Yeah, but yeah. we may not have left at all when we yeah. go back to the to near perfect because your friends aren't going to hang around for eighty years. It's like, should we get a burger or something? He's going to be yeah. a while. It's like, yeah. no, no, you, he just left. Yeah, you you're right about that. Like for example, if I was in a coma for thirty years. There you go. And you were you were alive for thirty years. Those thirty years, you got a family, you got kids. But let's say I woke up after those thirty years. For me, yeah. those thirty years Bingo. would feel like one second. But yep. for you, you 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 live thirty years. So, yeah. <clears throat> as you said with the dream thing, what yeah. does that say? Like, yeah, you might go to sleep for five hours, but in those five hours, you might have lived eighty years. Yeah. In whatever realm that is, because yeah. I kind of think the dream world is a in a, is a weird realm in itself because it kind of feels real, uh, but it's not until you wake up that you're like, oh, that was a dream, right? You know? And then like, and then it evaporates, and it, and right? and Quickly. for good reason, it has Quickly. to because yeah. yeah, if it doesn't evaporate, you are in real trouble. Uh, yeah. you know, I mean, you, you've woken up from dreams. It's like, I'm in a bad mood. I'm in a happy mood. It's like, yeah. you're in a real anxious mood. It's like, if it yeah. didn't evaporate as quickly as it did, yeah, oof, you'd have, I mean, you'd have a really bad day. Yeah. You know, also what, what, to me, what dreams kind of confirms is that yeah. we're not, we're not our bodies. What I mean by that is because, uh, if I go to sleep and I sleep in my bed over there and then I switch the channel to the dream realm or whatever that is. Right. I'm, I'm thinking I'm climbing on a mountain or whatever. Mm -hmm. And to me, that feels real. Yet over here in this reality, my body is still sleeping over there. But to me, that tells me that we are some kind of a consciousness thing that is just switching channels in whatever place we are. 
Sure. Like, when we are in this reality, we have switched to this frequency of this reality. And then when we go to sleep, we kind of switch to another realm. Our body is still in, connected in this realm. Yeah. Like to me, you know, I think what they've talked, uh, what they've said about dreams to us, what they've taught us about dreams, I think it's shenanigans. There's some bullshit with that. Yeah, it's absolutely. Just, just a dream. What yeah. is just a dream? You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. Anyways, yeah, yeah, they're they're, they're they're downplaying it only because um because they can't record it. There have been a number of movies over the years. Uh, uh, one of the oldest ones would have been Brainstorm with Christopher Walken, when you could record mm -hmm. thoughts, right? I told, and by the way, I don't think we're going to get that to that stage either. Where you when you can record our thoughts onto a hard drive, we're going to have real problems. Um, but if you well, they, if you ever have you ever seen the movie The Discovery? No. Oh, look it up if you get a chance. It is wonderful. Um, discovery, um, discovery, and the thirteenth level or twelfth level. Thirteenth, thirteenth floor. I'll floor. I'll email them to you. Thirteenth okay. floor, discovery, okay. and Freeman. Um, yeah. The 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 discovery was a Robert Redford movie. Did not do real well in the theaters because okay. I mean the message was really weird. Which was a scientist that was trying to record thoughts of people that had deceased. Right, uh -huh. they were gone. Like it was like okay, where do they go? And there was the early part, the, the story kicked off where uh, he had mathematically proven that there was an afterlife. And the second he did that and it was published, like 3 million people committed suicide over around the world. It was like bad, really, really bad. And mm. then he gets to the point, he advanced his research to where they got a guy who had recently died and they got video of it. And you could see the guy going through and what he was doing was he was fixing things in his life, like going through an alternate timeline where he was fixing things in his life that he wanted to fix. Like if he had to do something over, you know, that, and, and once they realized that he was in an alternate timeline and, and they were there, it was one of the finest moments of science where it was totally realistic, which was the, the, the scientist goes, okay, shut it all down, burn it, burn it all. Meaning you cannot let the general public know that there's actual physical video proof of an afterlife, what we were talking about earlier. Because if they That's did, crazy. it yeah. would never, it would it would be really bad. People would be like, oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> it's like, there's no way I'm, I'm freaking staying. And so, sorry, that, that was- Dude, Mark, I, I know you might not believe that that's possible, but I kind of, you know, I kind of believe it's possible. Because- uh, what? what, recording human, human dreams on their hard drives? Yeah. Mm. or their their thoughts or whatever because if everything is digital then well okay okay you're right from you're, you're absolutely right from our step from from outsider standpoint of course all everything we do is digital will yeah. we have access to that feed i doubt it because it's too damaging to the civilization it depends on who we who we are when you say we uh, we? Okay, okay. I the, don't know who the real we are. Do I think that Sony is going to make a machine that's going to allow you to to hook up and you're going to be able to watch watch the thoughts of your best friend? You know, Dave, dangerous that would be. I mean, my God, well, think think well, of. I'm not we, saying. Yeah, I'm not saying that we are going to see it, but they will. Yes, they Whoever would. Yeah, they would. But we couldn't. I mean, come on. You would never even allow something like that because you could never lie. At that point, meaning yeah. a poly you, you think of how damaging polygraphs are now, right? Imagine if yeah. you could hook up to somebody. It's like, so tell me, were you there at the time of the bank robbery? Try lying yeah. to a to a yeah. thing to record your your thoughts. It would be. But listen, Mark, I don't know what the Neuralink is gonna do regarding thoughts and stuff like that. I don't oh. know what the just because he says that the only thing I can do with the Neuralink is to control my smartphone doesn't mean that's the case. Maybe that motherfucker can, you know. See, see stuff in my brain or control me even i don't know what was it you know what I mean? freeman the discovery and what was the other movie oh uh, 13th floor. Thir 13th floor and yeah. discovery and freeman i got it okay i'm, oh, I'm nice. saying i'm saying this to you now anyway keep going. We, we, gonna, can go, we, can go, we can go a little longer that's fine I, okay because i i want to i want to touch on okay yeah yeah hit me hit me I, I i didn't even know that you were so well versed in this shit because that's uh, that's pretty cool Oh, not it's my many, it's my jam, man. It's where that's where I cut my teeth. Was was many? This stuff. It's not many people that are into the, uh, subjects like this. So that's Good that's point. very cool. So I wasn't even you know I didn't know that you yeah. Oh, anyway, agree. but that's cool. Uh, but you want to go back to some other stuff, or you want? <laughs> no, no. Let's go. Let's go. Whatever you want to talk about. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
I want to ask you, like, uh, you know, I like to ask dumb questions because I'm one of those people that I don't care if I look dumb because for me, I rather look dumb and uh, ask dumb questions. So maybe because from dumb questions, sometimes you can maybe get something good out of them. Basically, right. so I want to ask dumb questions uh, a little bit for all the, the flat earth stuff. Sure. <clears throat> and uh, if you have an answer and if you don't, I'm sure matter. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, you know uh, let's pretend that, you know, when we see the sun set, you know, yeah. the globers say, yeah, that's the curve, you know, over there. Yeah. That's the curve that is uh, covering the sun. OK, fine. But what if, if I was, let's say, over there and seeing that same sun? Like from, um, what is that? Is that 45 or 90 degrees? Like, uh, it's 90 degrees. Yeah, if I was 90 degrees and seeing that same sun in the in the ocean setting, yeah. if it was a globe, yeah, then wouldn't the sun need needed to be setting like this for me? Because for the other guy that is front facing the 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 sun that is yeah. setting. Yeah, it is going that way. But for me, if I'm 90 degrees there, okay. Um, yeah. Do you know? I, what know. I, do you know, I, what I know exactly. Yeah, because you're because you're, you're talking about two people, and yeah, exactly. So the there's a couple ways you could go with this. Um, the first is is that if the sun went, <sighs> let me do the <laughs> let me let me do the easy one. The the easy yeah. one is is that the sky is. We'll use the computer technology term. Yeah, the sky is yeah. instanced, meaning yeah. it kind of it's not just the sun, it's all sorts of things. Corpuscular rays, for example, you know, you you see cor you you standing in both two people, one is five miles that way, one you know from you. Yeah. Both are taking yeah. pictures of this corpuscular rays coming through the sky. Both could yeah. swear that the corpuscular rays are right next to them. Who's right? Well, technically, both could be right because if the sky is instanced. And by that, the um, and that's a that's a gaming term, meaning it, yeah. the the reality is being rendered for you. And here's yeah. the one of the great little hooks of this world, or any yeah. virtual reality. I mean, come on, if we do it in our simulations. Why wouldn't it be done here? Which is yeah. you can only be in one place at a time. Yeah. So therefore, we can create whatever because you can't be there and here simultaneously. Now, if you could, then yeah, you'd have a real problem there because you'd be like, ah, crap, I can't resolve both. But but. Yeah. But because, again, corpuscular rays or the sun setting or whatever you're looking at in the sky, yeah. you're saying, I'll, I'll use the belt of Orion real quick, which is the yeah. belt of, of, you're looking at the belt, we'll use the stars. You're looking at the yeah. belt of Orion and you call your buddy who's 800 miles away, right? Yeah. And yeah. he sees the belt of Orion too, right? And, yeah. and you say, yeah, well, the middle star is green. And he says, yeah. no, it's red. Yeah. Who's, who's right? Yeah. Technically, you could, you both could be right well, because it's yeah. being projected away. No different than now. This is kind of a cheap version, but you'll get it. Which is that dress that people were talking about years ago? Which was is the dress black or is it white? Meaning, um, you know, you had people staring at the same monitor. You ever seen that one where there was this weird kind of dress thing? It was no one was wearing it, and seven people in the room saw it as black, and three of them saw it as white. Same image, same computer. They're standing right next to each other. Who was right? Is it was like an illusion thing? It yeah. was an illusion. It was how your yeah. eyes were viewing the freaking image. The point was you could give all of them lie detector tests and they'd all pass. Yeah. So reality is subjective. Well, to... Mark, why I said this is because yeah. Yeah. I was trying to poke at the Globers because they say we see the sun, you know, uh, setting because we ah. words. Yeah. we're going backwards. Okay, fine, but what if 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 I'm over here, wouldn't you no? Because you, yeah, I I know I know what you're I know what you're going at. No, yeah. don't even don't even try going that way with a glober. Just just stick with stick with the David Weiss thing because he's accumulated yeah. the most footage out of anybody. Which is it just goes off into the distance, and the only reason yeah. you see it set at all is because of the thickness of the atmosphere. I know, which, yeah, which is. Again, people do not realize. Again, I get it. We don't. Nobody wants to remember science in, from school, which is we're not yeah. breathing in nothing. 
right? This is only 99.9% .9 transparent. It's mostly nitrogen and it gets thicker over distance to where eventually you can't see anything, including the sun. Even the sun can't punch through it at X yeah. miles. We don't know exactly yeah. what those miles are, yeah. but, but the same, I mean, again, same thing with water, same thing again. Uh, if you've ever known anyone that scuba dives, you scuba dive down to 200, not even 200 feet, right? 200 feet you can't see the sun at all. You lose yeah. every, almost all colors. You cannot see the sun. It might be a summer day. The sun's right above you. You cannot see it because it can't penetrate yeah. the water. We're right. breathing in a thin version of water. Therefore, yeah. the sun can't penetrate it. So don't, don't worry about that one. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you about this one. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you know, the thunder, thunderbolt bolt. You sure. Know, uh, uh, when it thunders outside, thunder strike or whatever it's called. Uh, uh lightning. yeah oh thank you lightning that's Why right say th no, no no thunderbolt's good thunder yeah. there's lightning and thunder thunderbolts t totally fine yeah yeah so it echoes yeah what is it echoing what is it bouncing you know what i mean like yeah because that should not happen if it's not something pretty close yeah yeah, that, yeah. Bounces with, right yeah yeah, what there the is hell? there are some thoughts out there that the 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 part of the ceiling that we can't get through is way lower than we think it is, which is and that kind of makes sense, right? Because remember, commercial airlines cap out at roughly ten miles it, it, on a good day. Spy planes maybe double that. That's only twenty miles high. Hmm. A lightning strike, you know, is big and it comes from a long way up and it creates a huge yeah. amount of noise. And yeah, does that noise kind of bounce off? What's something close? Yeah, to, right. I, yeah, for, for me, like it, for me, it does. Yeah, the Globers say that we don't have any uh, dome. You know, yeah. yeah, dome or whatever. So, yeah. what is creating that bouncing thing? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude, you could you could go on so many different tangents for that. Oh no, there, there's absolutely a dome. Uh, we are we are in a pressurized system. I mean, hey, come on. The, the thing that I throw out there to, to everybody, which is how does our atmosphere stay here? How yeah. does it stay here? You know, w there's a massive vacuum that's out, just outside and it's touching our atmosphere. You are the one that came up with the law of physics that says that pressure cannot n exist in non-pressure without a barrier. There is no barrier. You say gravity. And then it's like, no, gravity will lose every single time. I can prove that every day of the week. But you're saying, no, it has to be gravity because if it isn't, we'd be dead. And I go, that's terrible logic. I go, yeah. because you're saying that it can't be anything else. It can't be a pressurized system. It has to be gravity because you don't believe in the pressurized system. It's like, eh, yeah. fine, right? don't believe in the pressurized system. That's how but, it works. But what it, because uh, since the air is thinning out, something yeah. is going on up there. Like, oh yeah. Well, well, that's no, that's fine. That's fine. Look, w our air weighs something, right? No different yeah. than water pressure, right? Yeah. And, and you know this, right? So like you can go swimming 30 feet down, you're fine, right? You try swimming at 500 feet, you're dead, right? Yeah. Why? Because the, the, the weight of the water keeps pressing, 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 and it creates massive, massive water pressure. No different yeah. with air. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's thicker down here. I mean, remember, it's called atmospheric pressure. It's thicker yeah. here, but as you get further up, there's not as much weight pressing down on it. Or, and again, I am, I still believe in some sort of gravity. Even David's going to jump on that a little bit, which is, yeah, density affects everything, but there's yeah. still something causing it to go down. Is it electrostatic? Either way, but the 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 air that we breathe has weight. And yeah. so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it gets thinner at higher elevations. Hell, we've all done it, right? Well, you get up at, come on, altitude sickness kicks in for human beings at 7,000 feet. Um, yeah. And planes, can uh, commercial airlines really can't go much higher than, I mean, yeah, at 50,000 feet, they're pushing, you know, they're in trouble. Yeah. Why? Because they can't push off of anything, which is, you know, sorry, a side note, which is, so when you're walking, your feet are pushing off the ground. When you're swimming, yeah. your hands, and your legs are pushing off the water. Even planes push against the air. Yeah. What's a rocket pushing off of when it's in space? It's not. Therefore, it can't move forward because there's nothing for it to push off against. Not my rules. They're your rules. And you're like, oh, no, no, it's our thruster. And blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, no, no. And because you can't replicate it down here, you can't prove it up there. It's like, yeah. now to that point, can you send something into a vacuum? Yeah. But once it's there, 
you're on your own. You're screwed. You right. can't make a left turn or right turn. You can't slow down. You can't speed up. You're really in trouble. Right. But can because you get you don't have anything to push? There's push nothing you. to push off against. That's the whole point. No different than than uh, in a vacuum chamber. You know, the little things like like even a bell, for example, does not work in a vacuum chamber. You put a bell in a vacuum chamber, you take out the air, the bell does not make sound because there's nowhere for even the sound waves to go. So what yeah. sort of thrust are you using to get to the moon? Nothing. Nothing. You're not using yeah. anything. That's why you know what? what? You know what, Mark? Uh, just recently, they came up and said that uh, the moon is shrinking. Oh, so, yeah, that, that whole have thing. You seen that? Have you seen that? Yeah, that's just, that's just another space reinforcement story, which is every story they run. They don't even want you to read the article, and most people don't. All yeah. it is is like there's a story about the moon because you're in space. Hey, there's a face on Mars. You're in space. Oh, hey, something with Venus, yeah. something with Saturn, something with Jupiter, something with our yeah. probe. Oh, look, there's a black hole. Oh, look, yeah. we detected gravity waves. Oh, uh huh. Oh, look, but, we're yeah. But they say the moon the moon is shrinking, so that made it, might make it impossible for them to go back. <laughs> to the moon. Well, yeah, I, I covered a story last, last Tuesday where a former NASA chief was saying that they should probably scrap the Artemis project. And it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, again, the average person, because it takes so long, every president we've had in the United States, going all the way back even before Reagan, said, yeah. oh, we're going back to the moon. We're, we've got it covered. We're going back, right? Four years goes by, for a decade after freaking decade, to where now we just kick the can down the road. I mean, 50th year in a row. And and yeah. people like, when you going back? In fact, not just the Americans, not only has no one gone back to the moon, right? Yeah. The Americans, no, no, but no one's even tried. And so, no, no, Japan tried to land something. It's like, I haven't tried to land people. I haven't tried to land peep, anyone with a real camera. And the, the, again, it's one of the problems of social media, which is if you release footage now, it's got to be perfect, absolutely yeah. perfect. And you know full well, that's almost impossible to do. No movie can make, a, no, no studio can make a movie without movie mistakes. And yeah. we, we pride ourselves on it. We, we'll, everyone would stare and like open it up with Photoshop and throw it into video editors and they'd stare and they'd find it. You can't, it can't be done. The most ridiculous one was the Indian one, you know, the Indian moon landing. <sighs> that was like Nintendo 64 <laughs> graphics or something. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. The, yellow, yeah. And, the yellow landing. That was ridiculous. Man. And they did it for what? What was it? $75 million? Supposedly. they Yeah, land on the moon. I go, you can't even buy a decent super yacht for $75 yeah. million. Yeah. And you guys went to the moon? No. Yeah. No. Okay, let me ask you about this. Uh, I touched on this a little bit in, an, in another stream. Yeah. Uh, uh, the North Pole, if, if we're going to believe it's a globe, why right. is the no North Pole smaller or than the South Pole because isn't this, uh, the South Pole getting more sun than the North Pole if we're going to believe the tilt of the globe and you know what I mean like um I don't know if I I don't know if anyone's ever asked that because it's such an odd question um yeah <laughs> why is the North Pole smaller than the South Pole yeah, yeah I, because... I, I, if you're going to go down that road we'll ask why I mean, it's it's okay. It's not a bad question. I don't know if it gets as much traction as like, <laughs> why why is there a magnetic north but not a magnetic south, which nobody mm -hmm. nobody talks about, which is compasses only point north. And again, if you know your school, it's like, look, there's a there's a positive and a negative, right? Red, you yeah. know, red and green. And so when you get beyond the equator, it should start dominating south and dominating south to where when you finally get to Antarctica, that needle should be buried south. And it never, ever does. You can ask anybody. You look up on YouTube all day long. It's like, what does the compass do in Antarctica? It does nothing. In fact, they have yeah. no, they, it's useless down in yeah. Antarctica because it's so far away from the North Pole and there's no yeah. magnetic south. But yet they'll take you to that pole in the middle of the snow, right? Yeah. The South Pole It's like, oh, this is, this yeah. is the, the South Pole. It's like, really? Is it magnetic south? Well, it's the South Pole. It's like, yeah, you freaking clowns. You can clown. I know, but I'm just saying this because the Globers, if we're going to believe their model, yeah, then the North Pole should have more ice than the South. Should. Because, you know yeah, what it mean? should, but it doesn't. Or if you're going to go that far, um, why do either of the poles have any water at all? Remember, <laughs> if it's spinning... Like a merry-go-round, right? Yeah. The water should, centrifugal force should take some of that water and press it. You know, there should be no land at the equator. 
It should be covered with water. And you're saying, why does that make sense? So I go, think of Saturn's rings, right? Mm -hmm. The whole reason Saturn has rings supposedly is because of centri centrifugal force. It's like the yeah. water, you know full well, water reacts really quickly to motion. And so yes. at the very least, there should be a massive bulge of water at the equator. And, and why do we have still lakes at some parts? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. there's that. Oh, well, yeah. Why do the tides, for example, not affect lakes? That's a whole right. other thing. It's like right. we got some big lakes out there. Tides don't affect them. And yet the and that's part of the electromagnetic thing. So Yeah. And another thing also, I saw a video where there was they were at an open like they were an open was an open area but there was water there so yeah. you could see the mirroring of the skyline uh, of the sky on the water and it was you know perfectly straight refl yeah. reflection not bending no, it's absolutely yeah. mirror image yeah yeah should that be. should not yeah that should not yeah. be possible yeah Unfold. should not be or or um throw in little things like um the entire state of Kansas in the United States which has already been leveled out to be absolutely perfectly flat from one end to the other hundreds of miles right or um one of my favorites which is uh i think it's bolivia the salar del uni which is a salt okay. flats in in bolivia that get i think it's bolivia that um gets like a half inch of water and when it does the whole thing turns into this hundred square mile mirror right it's a hundred i'm sorry a hundred miles from one side to the other so it's way more than yeah. 100 square miles and, yeah. and it's like it shouldn't happen it's like you're yeah. telling me there's a perfectly flat area, perfectly flat yeah. like that. And it's not just a one-off. There's things like that in Kansas. There's so, there's flats all over the place. And it's like, oh, no, they're just really, really flat, but it's on a globe. It's like, okay, and sure. Even, even, even this, though, just looking at the sun reflection on, on an ocean or whatever, see, it's also doing that straight reflection, just like if you're doing a reflection on a flat table. Yeah. You'll, you will see a straight reflection of a light if you do it on a table. That same thing is happening on a on a sea or an ocean with it with the sun. Right. You're not seeing, uh, you know, like uh, what is it called? Like uh, what is the word I'm looking for? You don't see the sun's reflection as a spotlight. Right. You see it as a straight. Yeah, thing. straight line. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So so even that kind of proves that yeah. thing. Oh yeah, we. Yeah, we we crush them all day long on stuff like that. Yeah, let me tell you, uh, talk talk about this one, the yeah. clock system that is absolutely spotless and perfect. Uh, how is that happening uh, in an accidental, you know, <laughs> right? Like Big Bang nonsense. How do we get the clock system to be exactly how it is, like in in Precision, like in the seconds, in the minutes, hours. Right, right. You know. Uh, I mean? Yeah, if it, yeah. If you're gonna go that road, um, there's a couple things I want to I want to touch on. First off, would be the um, look up, and I only got into this fairly recently, which was the time zones. How they are. I mean, Austin yeah. Witsit did some wonderful stuff on the time zones, where when you look at the time zones, because there should be 24 equal bands of time zones around this world they are really screwed up and they only make sense on a flat model on the AE map, which is, you know, especially the one up here where Alaska meets Russia, where it jumps three hours really? for where, for no apparent reason whatsoever, three hours. And it's not like, you know, they're, yeah, of course you bend some time zones here and there for, for lakes and rivers and, you know, geographical things. But, but yeah. what happens is when you lay it out on a flat map, it does not make sense at all. Kind of like, um, uh, for example, Australia and America are on equal ends, you know, one in the southern one. They have, they're roughly the same size. We have four time zones bordering on five, if you include the tip of Maine, right? Yeah. They have two. It's like, oh, okay, how does that happen? Well, if you were drawing, you know, if you were trying to compress a flat map into a globe, you have yeah. to get rid of some of the time zones in certain areas and add them uh, in as you get closer up above, what if you haven't seen that video? I'll, I'll send it to you, but it's absolutely yeah, 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 brilliant. I want to see that. I want to that. See and, that, but... that and, uh, the other thing about time, which is would yeah. be the um, the moon, how we only see exactly one face of it. It's yeah. locked, it's locked in, it doesn't even change a, a quarter of a degree, even in a century. So, you know, how do that, we even know? How do we even know that that's a 3D object? What I mean exactly. Is Exactly, because again, if you're in the from the video game world, right, from yeah. the computer world, that's exactly what we would do. Or, or the fact that all the craters are set at forty or ninety degree angles, 
right where the craters are sphere are 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 um are circles like they came yeah. in perfectly straight yeah. straight down or oh, come on if you're gonna go that far then go to the um the stars how stars have never um have never transited with each other meaning there's no parallax right we're yeah. flying in all these different directions and the stars never cross paths it's the same zodiac for thousands of years same for and the when you zoom that shit in it doesn't look 3d either it looks no. like a 2d whatever that is yep. and the sun to for us to even determine that that is a sphere wouldn't it need shade you know what i mean like the circle would need shades yep yeah, I, I, come on, I could I could do that all day, or the or the eclipse shadow, the the fact that the the eclipse, you know, because we have an eclipse coming up in America um, really? in uh, two months. Okay. And the eclipse shadow is the blackout zone is only seventy miles wide. It's like, okay. wait a minute, the moon the moon is two thousand miles wide. Why is the blackout zone seventy miles wide when we say that's pretty much approximately what we say the moon is to begin with, right? Hmm. Wow, what a coincidence! The 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 blackout zone is is that is that small. It's like it shouldn't be. That doesn't happen in real optics ever, which is you don't you never walk by a building and your shadow shrinks down to the size of an action figure. It never ever happens. So, oh yeah. Flat Earth Dave had a thing regarding the eclipse that he thought it was like the sun source that is he thinks it's outside of this firmament or whatever. Sure. sure. And that something is covering the projection of the sun. Or something. I might yeah, be right. Which, yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely right. There was a guy that one of our guys, his name was Mike Helmick. Um, he passed away uh, a couple of years ago. And he, I remember him calling me after the 2017 eclipse. And he goes, he goes, Mark, nothing's eclipsing the sun. And I go, I go, what do you mean nothing's eclipsing? He goes, there's no physical object eclipsing the sun. <laughs> he goes, it's, he goes, I've got it all on camera. He goes, it's eclipsing itself. And I go, oh my. And I, Again, the light bulbs don't don't click in until you until so some something does it for you. It's like, of yeah. course, in a planetarium, how do you create a crescent, or how do you create the shadows on the moon in a planetarium? You just do, right? You just set the moon. You just shade the moon yourself. Yeah. That's what you do. Of course, we don't put the sun in a planetarium because it doesn't make any sense. Who would want to see the sun in a planetarium? But yeah. shading the sun would be no different. You just yeah. shade the freaking sun. On a much much bigger scale of a of a of again, how would we do it in software, for example? Yeah, you know, in 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 the sun, in if you want to create a, a sun eclipse in GTA, for example, how would you do it? You're not going to yeah. move an object in front of it. You're just yeah. going to freaking shade it. Now you're going to make that object close to it, right? Yeah. But yeah, you're not going to have it literally go in front of it because that would be a pain in the ass to yeah. create you know a two D object in front of another two D. No, you're just going to get yeah. it there and then you're going to shade it yourself and then you're going to have the other one kick off yeah oh, anyway insane yeah. it's insane okay let me ask you uh a couple more yeah i mean i want to ask you about religion a little bit sure it's, okay sure, it's fine. Uh, i don't even know are you are you christian i was i was raised born again christian yeah. but when i got into the tech field i mean come on you can't be in tech that much without falling away from from religion mm, but when i got into flat earth yeah i had that realization that oh wow so the whole creator thing that's a, right. a that's a thing now to that point though do i respect all the five major religious houses oh yeah you bet i do yeah. do yeah. i think they've all got pieces of the same puzzle yes do i think they've all been corrupted at certain levels because power and money corrupt everyone yes. yeah yeah i do yeah. Yeah. Um, but but I don't think anyone's got the exclusive rights to. I mean, come on, people say, you know, my my peace loving God is better than your peace loving God, and I'll kill you to defend that, right? <laughs> right. So come on. And and right. and everybody and and I'm not trying to be glib when I say this. It's like, look, you better be sure you're back on the right horse because you got a one right. in five chance. Because the first God that shows up wins, right? right? So don't don't. Uh... And think about this. Yeah. If they could just all agree that they are worshiping the same God, because there is only one God. If there you gonna, go. Yeah. Right. If there is yeah. only one Creator. Yeah. That would be like half of the population of the world, or more. I don't know how much, but oh, eighty percent are, are 80%. tied to eighty percent are tied to the major five religions. Yeah. Think about the peace that could come just yeah. by that thing alone. So yeah. <laughs> my thing is this. Yeah. Uh, 
they say they say for example i'm gonna take the bible i've heard that they say whoever wrote the bible it got inspired by the word of god i don't know sure. if that's what it is but sure. that's what i've heard uh okay but let's play with that uh let's say let's play that the the bible was saying something horrible like i'm gonna exaggerate it like let's say something was said in the bible in the word of god like right. god says it's okay to off some people at right. the 18th 18th of the month or at some ridiculous thing right would you still uh as align yourself with that if you if you read something weird like that in the book of supposed god uh, well then you're getting into bible literal literalist versus bible like fundamentalists which is i mean come on in in the christian bible there's all sorts of weird stuff that's still in there uh you know yeah, stuff yeah, you're yeah. supposed to do stuff you're not supposed to do you know it reads like um ancient but i'm Greek. talking about the the simple stuff like uh Let's say in the Ten Commandments, instead right. of the things that are in there now, let's right. say there was some odd thing in there. Would there still be people? There, there that? still would be, but the majority still rules. I'm a, I'm a big believer that in um, majority uh, consensus taking over. We, and come on, this has happened over the years. For example, um, yeah. if you if you read if you remember the old stories, um, suicide wasn't built in to uh into some of the the bible literature and it was built in to get to to really reduce the instance of suicide cults back mm -hmm. in the day you know there were there were a number of suicide cults in ancient times yeah. and they yeah. built it okay by the way suicide's a sin and whoa, go go figure much less suicide cults right yeah yeah so yeah. Would, would i align it me personally no but I, I don't have to worry about that since I think most of those have been taken care of. But what I was going to say, say is that that's the reason why we have the division of the religions, meaning, you know, the Christian religion and Islam and Buddhism and Hinduism, and Judaism, they all yeah. have their sticking points. And that those sticking points are the reason why they were factioned off as much as they were. And I also yeah. think it was deliberately part of the system, which is why would it, why would we have one religion? Uh, the the story that I talked about in the clue is real fast, which was the Tower of Babel, one of the finest little yeah. little, little stories which ever was, which was the very first civilization of this particular place was too unified and too organized and too advanced to where they immediately knew where they were. It's like, oh, okay, so we're in a dome. <laughs> and uh yeah we're gonna try to make it start building we're gonna see if we can meet god we have the ability yeah. to actually build a structure that can reach god we know exactly yeah. how to do it and god looks down it was a great story where god yeah. looks down and's like uh yeah this isn't gonna work out so we gotta you know it's like scatter 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 and then all of a sudden oh hey languages that's a great idea yeah and then that was it so sorry yeah 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 but why i'm saying this is because i want to get yeah. to a point here um, okay The people believing in religion, are they doing that because the words of God kind of uh, gives them hope, gives them yeah, faith? Yeah, but they're agreeing with what God is saying in the Sure. Bible. You what? know what I mean? Yeah. People... So, but why are, they, why are they agreeing with what God is saying? Is because, because God... We, all, we already have those things built inside of us the people that are sane that is not the psychopaths people you know the old saying lead follow lead follower get out of the way people god is to many many people i mean 80 percent of this world yeah. um is the ageless leader people love leaders we always have you know the the pyramid shape that the masses look up to icons and they they always have. I don't care if it's a sports icon or or, yeah. or it's a or a religious icon or freaking Taylor Swift. People, yeah. you know, look up to these people. It's like, which is why you know, never meet your heroes. That type of thing. So that's why they agree because it's like, oh, these are the words written by your hero. Therefore, yeah. yes. Therefore, we will follow. Come on, the the commanders in the military. You know, like a the, cult, cult the, thing, right? It is, but it's with every structure we have. I mean, soldiers follow generals. 
right? Yeah. The generals were raised not that much different than the soldiers, but it's like, well, we have to have faith in our leaders and God and the books that surround that God are the ultimate, you know, in, in the, why wouldn't you follow it? That's, that's just yeah. how it's set up. So, I mean, and, well, and it's up to us to figure out how to interpret it and either break away or come into a self-discovery where there's a balance. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It drives me nuts when uh, it something turns into a cult and then they mindlessly, yeah. you know, but that goes into the whole, um, the mob rules, which is, come on, yeah. the mob is a dangerous thing that, that, as you know, you know, if it gets ahead of steam, logic goes out the window and next thing you know, it's like, hey, burn a whole bunch of witches because yes. they can. Yes. I can't stand cults. I, I mean, uh, yeah. it doesn't matter what it is, if it's in music, it, whatever it is, I just can't stand it because right. it it becomes like a hive mind weirdness. Yeah. I want to see your individuality because I believe yeah. everybody has a, I mean, the non-NPC people at least, has a uniqueness. And Absolutely. I want to see that. I want to see your uniqueness. The, you know, the line to... from the line from Men in Black, which was very famous now, which is a person is a person is smart, but yeah. people are dumb, panicky, and dangerous. Yes. And yeah, yeah, when you get when yeah, it seems like when you have a person, you're right. And it, the individual, come on, we've seen this with the Ash experiment very many, many, many times, which is you get like six people in an elevator, actors, right? And yeah. then you put a seventh person, doesn't know what's happening, six people turn and face a wall that has nothing to do with the door in the elevator that seventh person is gonna turn it's gonna yeah. turn with them because <laughs> it's, it's like it's like okay do i want to go against the group is there something they know i don't that you're right they give up their individuality they give up their own intelligence which is why yeah. and we'll have to wrap this up pretty soon oh, yeah, is, yeah, yeah absolutely which is which is why the flat earth thing t takes a while because the you know we're the the mass is out there you know it's like oh flatter is dumb right and the, the you know because you're you got a big group of people behind you but then that group gets smaller and smaller to where we're not quite at the tipping point but we're damn yeah. close i mean we're 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 we've gained gained so many through attrition which is which is fantastic you're right about that we need to reach a a, a tipping point b before yeah. the sheeple can align themselves to there you flatter. go uh, we're, right. we're, we're we're heading uh, you know we're going it's going good it's going yeah. good it's i think it is i've i have not had any problems with it uh you know the in fact the, yeah. the pandemic just changed it for us yeah. which was it forced people inside but it also forced people on their computers and their phones and they were going yeah. down way more rabbit holes also yeah. they, they ran out of things to watch on netflix so yeah it's too bad we didn't touch on that i, I wanted to touch on that too but you know right, we, can, we can do it a different time absolutely it was it, it was absolutely my honor it was a oh no no i, no. Well, I did not honor. know that you had so many different you know thoughts. oh i have a tough time sleeping man it's oh, not God. easy I'm, I'm the same i'm the same it never stops it never yeah. stops it's yeah. like but it's very cool very cool to see that side of awesome. you uh, thank uh, you uh, 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 enjoy this a lot cool uh, and i'm gonna watch with my wife those movies that you said yeah i've sent the th sent three the maps. three to you and the three for anyone that's listening uh would be yeah, uh, that great. i sent were uh freeman which again which is a movie about npcs which i which i think is great though so, i mean it's funny and but you gotta remember it's all npcs uh the discovery with robert redford about can you record human thoughts after they die and the 13th and then, floor which yeah, is which is, are we living in a simulation? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks for that. Uh, Mark, uh, this was fantastic. Yeah, and, thank uh, you. Let's, let's do it again. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. you uh, let me know when, and I'd be happy to come on. Uh, fantastic. Great. Thank you, Mark. See you next time, Mark. Thanks. Peace out, everybody. Peace. Bye. Bye.